In this section we're going to be looking at how we can organize information into columns and tables and we'll be using the practice files in the chapter 4 folder. For this exercise here we're going to use the room planner document. So you'll see here we have a uh, document for simple room design and we want to be able to organize uh, some or all of this text into columns. Now under the page layout tab on the ribbon you'll see here a columns control and if you click on it you can select do we want one, two, three or different types of columns. Now let's say we want two columns. Now here we already we've got a problem because all of the text has been arranged into columns. We don't want this so we'll press the undo button. What we want is to be able to take some of the text and make it into columns. So click just here just before take a look at how your home is decorated and then scroll down here and where it says you're almost there just before the note hold down the shift key and click again and you'll see all of the text between these two points has now been highlighted. Now we can select columns so we'll click on columns and let's say we want it in three columns and just that text has now been made into three columns. Now Sometimes you'll find that there are um, hyphenation problems here with words being split up. It's not actually too bad here, but I'll show you the controls. Here, next to uh, the column setting on the ribbon, there are automatic and manual hyphenation options and advanced options here as well. So we'll tell it to automatically hyphen, and you'll see here that it is hyphenating words. If we take it back to none, then it's not doing that. We can tidy these up even more by going back to the Home tab and perhaps selecting Full Justification here in the Paragraph section so that that text is now much easier to read and easier on the eye. So we want yet more control over these columns. So let's go back a step and uh, when we press Undo then as we go back to the previous step, the text that we previously had highlighted is re-highlighted. It's a very quick way sometimes of being able to highlight the text. And back under the Page Layout tab, we'll select Columns again. There's a More Columns option here down the bottom. And here is where we have tremendous amount of control over um, the way the columns are laid out. Now, by default, uh, all columns are of equal column width but if you want you can turn this feature off and you can specify as many columns as you want I mean literally we can take this up to you know eight or nine if we want to <clears throat> take it down to two we can select uh, left or right columns which might be useful for something like a, a newsletter for instance and you'll see here in the preview uh, pane there's a, uh, a view of what it uh, is going to look like. There's also a line in between button which you can see will insert a line between these columns. So let's say we want uh, two columns here, no we'll say three columns here with a line in between. We do want them of equal column width but we can uh, control them if we don't. Press OK and you'll see that this has now changed and we have this text neatly arranged into columns. And it can make your text much easier to uh, to read and organize especially if you're producing something like a newsletter although bear in mind you may end up with a little situation down here just where it says note if you've decided to paint your room you might just want to insert another carriage return there just to tidy things up so that's how we uh, uh, create columns and work with columns in the next section we're going to look at how we create tabbed lists Now that we've looked at organizing information in columns, let's look at creating tabbed lists. And for this document, we're going to want to start with a blank document. You're also going to want to make sure that you have the rulers turned on, either by clicking the View Ruler button here above the scroll bar on the right-hand side, or under the View tab, making sure you have a tick in Ruler. So we're going to want to uh, type some information. So we'll type Location, use a single tab. We'll type Discount, Applies, a single tab again and hourly rate. You uh, ought to be careful when creating tab lists not to use multiple tabs 
and I'll explain why shortly. Just use a single tap. Now press enter and we'll type some more information. In home, one tab, uh, type no, type uh, another tab and we'll type $50. Now these aren't lining up at the moment, but don't worry about this. More information, phone, type one tab, we'll type yes, another tab and we'll type $35 and we'll have uh, in store one tab yes another tab and we'll have forty dollars now first things first we want to turn the location discount applies an hourly rate text into a header so if we select all of that and in the toolbar that appears or in the ribbon we'll make that bold we also want now to select all of the text we've got here and in the page layout tab in this paragraph section we want to take this spacing down from 10 point down to naught and you can see the difference it makes to the text it makes it much tighter and easier to work with now we want to keep this um, organized the way we are now you remember previously I talked about these uh, tab uh, buttons here and the uh, on the uh, rulers in the top left and we want to click on this so that we can create a center tab you'll see here it says center tab and we want to create a center tab at around about uh, this five uh, button here and you'll see that this has now created uh, a tab here where all the text uh, there is centered now it's a bit further over and far over so we can drag it and we can move it wherever we want you'll see we've just moved it there to four now we want to create a right tab so we'll click on this again in the uh, uh, top left of the ruler here click on it so we get right tab and around about the uh, 8 mark I think we'll just click there to create a right tab if that was too close or too far away we just drag it to where we want now we've easily created a uh, formatted um, tabbed list and uh, it's hardly taken any time at all so in the next segment we're going to take this one step further and we're going to look at how to present information in tables right let's take a step on uh, from tablets and look at presenting information in tables and for this exercise we're going to begin with a blank document and then move on to one of the practice documents now in the insert tab on the ribbon we have a table control now there are various different ways of inserting tables we'll start with uh, my favorite which is the easiest where you have a grid here and you can see as you mouse over this grid uh, word will create a table the full width of the page with however many rows and columns you specify let's say we want five columns here and three rows so if we just click on the bottom of that our table has appeared so we'll get rid of that remember at any time you can undo using the undo control and we'll go back and we will draw a table instead now drawing a table is a bit more fiddly and it won't suit everybody let's say we uh, we draw little boxes here by um, starting at the top left and going to the right but as I say it doesn't always do exactly what you would want it to do but you can create some very very complex uh, tables with it for instance you know this this layout here now you'll notice by this point that uh, two new tabs have appeared on the ribbon with design and layout tools so uh, these give us more control over over a table let me uh, give you an example we'll get rid of this table here and back in the table controls we'll insert a quick table first now uh, a quick table um, there's uh, plenty of uh, pre-formatted options here for different types of table that were that come automatically with word let's say we want to insert a matrix table so we'll click on that and that automatically appears with uh, sample data in it so that we can uh, change this and modify it we can say this is going to be called Washington by hi by highlighting that text and uh, and uh, changing it. Now we want to be able to modify uh, these tables and if you 
uh, hover over a table or click on it, you'll see in the top left a little square icon has appeared with arrows. And if you click on that, it will select the entire table. Now here is where we have uh, more control over tables. Now at its most basic, uh, between columns, uh, you'll see if you mouse over the cursor changes. You'll see here it's changed to a left and right arrow. Between rows it's changed to an up down arrow. And you can use these to drag and drop the, uh, the, the column widths to wherever you want them. Now we'll have a look more at this in the next section but for now I want to create another table so we'll close this practice document and we will open in the chapter 4 folder consultation A uh, file. Now we need to create a form here, we need to create a table here's the information that we need to insert in this table so after please complete the form we will put in a couple of carriage returns now under the insert tab on the ribbon select table now we know here that we need three columns we can see we've got three columns here um, our, uh, our text in green and we need five rows because we need a header row and we need rows for our text so we'll select here three columns and five rows we can now start typing text into, uh, into these rows and so on. Now this is how we create uh, this is how we create tables in the next segment we're going to begin to we're going to look at how we format these tables to uh, so that they're presenting the information as we want them presented but keep this file open because we're going to we're going to carry on working with this one. Now that we've looked at having uh, having information presented in tables, let's look at how we format them. And here's one I uh, I uh, made earlier. I've finished inputting the information that we need into this table that we created in the last segment. But now we need to format it. Now, you remember I said that uh, when a, a table is highlighted, there'll be this little square icon in the top left. So we'll click on that icon, and we'll see here the whole table is now selected. We now have these two new tabs on the ribbon, the table uh, design tab and the table layout tab. Right, let's start by having a look, uh, look at the layout tab. Now the layout tab can uh, delete table, it can insert rows to the left and right. Let's say for instance we want a row inserted to the right of this cell, then we'll click insert right and that um, uh, those rows have now been inserted. We can select multiple cells and we can merge them. We can uh, go into a, a single cell or multiple cells and we can split them. There are a great deal of uh, things that we can do with tables to um, format them, including if we select the whole table, we can change the alignment of the text so it all appears. Um, in uh, the middle or bottom, in the central bottom of cells, and uh, and so on. Now let's have a look at the design tab here. Now we, uh, if we pull down this little pull down uh, drop down menu here, where it says table styles, we have a great many table styles that we can choose from to uh, format our table, but we can't actually see what it is we're doing at the moment so we'll click back on the design tab and here we can just scroll up and down and we can have a look at a table style that suits us what sort of table do we want that seems pretty okay and we'll have a, another look further down there's an awful lot of auto formatting options available for tables so let's say we want to pick this one. Uh, this is absolutely uh, suitable for our needs, so we'll click on that. Now the text is a bit large, so what we'll do is we'll just change the text size. You'll see it'll auto format here so that we can see, okay, we'll just make it 14 point, and now we have a better formatted table. There are all sorts of options you have 
for formatting tables here um, in shading the cells uh, which has been done automatically here by the table styles but you can select multiple cells um, by clicking and, and dragging or by clicking in a single cell and you can change the, uh, the, se uh, the shading and there's tremendous amount uh, of control available over the colors available to you. You can change the borders in cells, let's say we want to select all of these and we want all borders to appear then we just click all borders there and they have now appeared on that table. Again we've got the undo button on the quick access toolbar to undo any changes we don't want and there are all sorts of other uh, controls here. Now let's uh, select the table once again by pressing the square icon in its top left and we'll right click in it. We can insert, uh, we can choose table properties here from the context menu that appears when we right click and this gives us yet more control and some people will prefer to work with the table properties uh, dialog rather than the ribbon. Um, things are neatly arranged into tabs for tables, rows, columns, cells and alternate text for the table as well it's going to be useful if you're going to be presenting it um, on a uh, on a web page there are uh, there's a button here for borders and shading options and we have a tremendous amount of control here on uh, on the, the borders not only for the table but for the entire page if you want to add a border to the page we can select shading um, we can have all sorts of different styles for, for that shading and there's an options button here in which we can control the default margins let's say we want to uh, change the, uh, the margins and we want to allow spacing between the cells as well so if I click OK here and OK again you, you can now see what has happened there's a tremendous amount of flexibility available to you and it's well worth having a play with all the table um, uh, formatting tools Remember, you have the undo option on the quick access toolbar at any time should you need it. Now, in the next section, we're going to look at adding graphics, uh, pictures, and clip art to your Word files.